10, 125 pounds. Let's settle this. Nick Soriano, top rank for Michigan. Drew Hildebrand, top 10 ranking, number seven in the Intermat rankings. An All-American for Penn State. He accomplished that honor in a Central Michigan singlet. A lot has changed when you look at these two teams. I'll tell you what it really has, and the latest changes have been these two athletes joining their teams there. Hildebrand coming into the program, and then also, you know, Big news with Nick Suriano, the national champion, getting right after it here, joining the Wolverines. Really got people looking forward to this match. Nick Suriano, the national champion for Rutgers, right in on the legs quickly here in this first period. Won that national champion for Rutgers, the first ever in Scarlet Knight history. And this is one of those matches, Jim. Michigan, they want to, they want bonus points. They really do, and this is an opportunity here for them. And, and you know. A lot of time being uh, uh, used right here. He gets a second ankle right there. And Conrad Duffy, the official. No, we're neutral. Oh, they went neutral here. I think there was a hand off to the mat right there. So David Bulliard, one of the assistant coaches, asking for the stall warning there. But uh, a lot of time being spent there. You know, if you're going to get a major, you want to get off to that first quick takedown. And it's kind of interesting talking about a major against a guy that would, you know, finished fourth in the country last year at this weight class. But that's really where the mindset of the Wolverines are there with national champ Nick Soriano in the lineup. Hildebrandt out of Granger, Indiana. State champion in 2016, as I mentioned, went to Central Michigan, where he was a two-time All-American, fourth in 2021, finger, finger, and first team for Coach Borelli in 2020. We are scoreless, 145 here in the first. Fingers, gentlemen, out of the fingers. Soriano defeating Dayton Fix to win that national title at 133. The previous year in 2018, fell to Spencer Lee of Iowa in the national final, then down at 125-5-1. What stands out through 90 seconds? Well, I'll tell you what, that Hildebrandt's doing a nice job of keeping in position. He watched his last match here against Shaver from Rutgers. He gave up a lot of positions and kind of got off the mat a little bit, never got to his shots. I think where Hildebrand is really dangerous is some little slide-by efforts, and, and I think Soriano feels that, so you don't get the, the, quite the push that you would normally get to because he's dangerous. But just the activity by Soriano gets him a stall warning. There's the first call on Hildebrand, who comes in 3-0 this season, coming off that win against Shaver of Rutgers, beat him 4-2. Again, Hildebrand holding in there pretty well. He's going to have to make an effort to get to his shot. He's long, rangy, tough in the top position. Keep the post clean. 30 seconds first period. Doesn't really commit to those shots, but it, he can, seems to score when he needs to. Scored a lot of, uh, uh, you know, close victories in the uh, national tournament last year. You take a look at some of those bouts. He was actually behind in a few of them and just gutted his way to a fourth place finish. But he's doing a good job of keeping Suriano right out there in front of him. And an excellent period there for Drew Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt and Suriano here at 125. Russell a scoreless first. Kale Sanderson, 13th year at Penn State. They have won eight of the last 10 national championships. Seven Big Ten dual meet titles. Six Big Ten championship titles. Unbelievable career, of course, as an athlete. You think about great numbers in sports, in wrestling, 159-0. Significant as Cale Sanderson at Iowa State, the only four-time undefeated Division I national championship. And a couple guys that fit really well in this lineup, Drew Hildebrandt, who we see here at 125. And how about the story of Brady Berge? He was coaching under Damian Hahn at South Dakota State. Still had that itch, unfinished business, suffered an injury at the NCAA Championships in March, and here he is wrestling 165 for Penn State. Things, Jim, yeah. change quickly. They quick change quickly right when the semester starts here, but Bergie had an opportunity to come back and just some unfinished business for him. He, he wasn't able to stay healthy, and here you see the blood uh, time used there for Hildebrandt here, a little blood coming out of his mouth, but I get also tip of the cap to Damian Hahn at South Dakota State. Great you know, guy. You know, let one of his guys go, his coaches go, and didn't fight it, understood the urge, and wants to have him back in his program here going forward, so that's a big deal. You see Kale Sanderson warming up national champion Roman Bravo Young. Quick off the whistle of Soriano, sit position. Works up. Fighting hands right there. Doing a really good job of them turning in. 
stall warning already on, and I think that, that, that Suriano's done a nice job of trying to get technical with this, try to catch shots, but he's also capable of just turning it into a hand fighting war out there, and maybe that's where he goes at this stage in the match. Hildebrandt, a two-time MAC champion. Older sister Sarah Hildebrandt, Olympic bronze medalist in Tokyo, two-time world silver, so probably some pretty good scraps in that living room. 122nd period, just the escape from Suriano. Yeah, Hildebrand looks a lot better than it had an opportunity to do the match with him last uh, Sunday against uh, Rutgers, and it just it's got off to a slow start. Again, these guys just getting going into they their competitive the post, seasons and looks significantly better in this match against Suriano. Just moving better. Fifty seconds in the second period. Looking for our first takedown. Looking for our really kind of first, actually our second committed shot. Suriano was able to get one early in the first period and they went off the mat. Suriano out of Paramus, New Jersey, Bergen Catholic, where he won four state three titles. Seconds, three seconds remaining in the period. 159 and was a prep was Nick Suriano. Working the head, stuff in the head, and now nice job there by uh, Hildebrandt getting to a corner there off of the shot. You've got to be careful if you're Suriano not to just dive in on something because he's got a good uh, finish. He'll drop into on a single leg to your left leg. Suriano able to square up. Guys are really tying up a lot in the wrist, Shane. Sean Bormet in his fourth season at Michigan, of course, wrestled here back in the early 90s, was a two-time All-American, a national finalist as well. In his fourth season, Wolverines at the Big Tens have been sixth, seventh, and fourth, and a pair of fifth-place finishes at the NCAA championships as Hildebrand starts the period on bottom. And we'll see how committed Soriano is in this top position, Jim. Well, I think he's going to have to stay committed here just to, to go ahead and work down. He's able to get a quick enough escape. Chopping there hard. He can come hard with that spiral ride. Again, right there, good lock on the working for the mat return. Almost a locked hand situation right there with the hands down. They'll go off the mat. Mentioned Soriano won that national title at Rutgers. He began his career at Penn State. And this is kind of the, this weekend is the uh, going home tour here. For yes, Kansas. he's got this Penn State today, and then he wrestles Rutgers on Sunday. Nick Suriano at his third Big Ten school. He leads at 1-0 and takes riding time to 30 seconds during the third period. Opportunity for Hildebrandt to come in if he can create some hip separation. A decent return there by Suriano. You take what you get in this situation. Now you want to burn a little clock in the top position be active enough so they don't go off the mat. Stay Again, right there on the edge. Yeah, burn a little clock right here, make the next start a little easier. Switch no, into a double and they go off the mat. So that was good work the last 10, 12 seconds there to, to make this next ride out position a little bit easier. Eight more seconds and he collects the riding time point. Soriano this season, Get set, Red. a tech fall and two majors, three and oh. Stay set, hold set, three. Not much for him. Hildebrandt off the whistle. One green. Tight waist. Two. Works up into a claw to Soriano with riding time over a man. Yep. Crowd understands that. Gets a little ovation there for that point. I don't know how commended that Soriano will be with the ride at this point. Probably go till he gives up a stall warning. A little front trip action there. Good mat and return. You, know, you don't have to do much that when the guy's got his nose over his toes. You just front trip right there and put a little pressure forward on him. 30 seconds, 30 seconds remaining in the match. And right now, oh, it's, you're kind of in no man's land, Shane. You, you, you stay with the ride, 23 seconds. I think he'll do that. You don't want the referee to bump you out of that action that you're going now. You, you know, change it up. You just don't want to give up a stall where you got to stay active right there. Two. Soriano. An escape in the second period. There's an escape by Hildebrand. Final seconds. And we're going to go back to the center with a 2-1 advantage. Riding time locked up, of course. Not quite the match that we had envisioned on the feet. You know, Suriano really not able to get to a leg only but once in the period. And no offensive shots there by Hildebrand. So Michigan strikes first at 125 pounds. Number one ranked at 125 pounds, Nick Suriano. 
with that riding time, a 2-1 decision for the Wolverine. Head on the back from Josh Torella. Five national champions in this duel. Here's the second one. Roman Bravo Young for Penn State. And ranked eighth in the country, Dylan Ragason for the Wolverines. And the duel last year, a seven-point victory for RBY. Yeah, and, and that was a match for, you know, Ragason just coming out as a freshman and, and really kind of getting started. But the thing I like about Ragason is he's willing to mix it up. And, He's got a decision to make in this match. You know, if you mix it up too much with RBY, Roman Bravo Young, you just make him look better. You know, <laughs> you, you display all the quicknesses, the quickness, athletic ability, anticipation, his style. You know, it's people have done a little bit better in keeping it close just by, you know, wrapping up those wrists, staying head to head there, working for your positions, but not doing too much, keeping the match within range. He is so dynamic. That's the word that comes to mind with RBY. He's exciting, has such a great feel for the sport, fluid. Yeah, I mean, quickness is, is anti you know, anticipation of what the other opponent's going to do is quickness in this sport, and he seems to have almost a, he's a dance step or two ahead of the next guy. I mean, it's just the next move that the guy's going to make. Great footwork. A three-time All-American. He beat Dayton Fix last March, four to two in sudden victory. The Cowboy RBY comes in with 23 straight wins. Two-time Big Ten finalist beat Austin DeSanto at Penn State last March to claim his first title. Year previous, fell to Sebastian Rivera. Ragason is normally would be one of those guys that is forcing the action at this point, but it's all respect at this point, not really driving into the, his opponent. He's, you know, given a little bit of territory. Normally he's double overs, locking guys up, you know, over and under positions, going upper body, going with the shots, and it's just a totally about respect there. The spin around there into the double leg. Let's see if he tries to force that underhook. It's blocked out pretty well. See the head in the top of the shoulder right there. We'll peel out of that, come right to the elbow tie. Nearly two minutes into the set, uh, first period, no score. Center. Look at those goal behinds from RBY. Yeah, he just dove right back behind there with him and he got a lot of territory. Now he gets the finish. Exactly what we talked about there is that, that the more you get after him, the quicker he gets and the more he doesn't think that, that Ragason doesn't think there was points there, but I, I don't think it's worth the challenge, challenge, I agree. It, I was it, just going to ask you that question. I would not challenge right now if I'm Michigan, unless I am 100% sure I'm going yeah. to win it. And I didn't see anything there, Jim, at yeah, first I don't glance see anything, that indicated yeah, anything The, the officials got to be a little bit more judicious about when they're going to go ahead and do that. That was a pretty, was, looked to me, it was pretty clear. But So Ragason and Michigan will challenge the call on the mat. See, look at the go behind. They're clearly in bounds right there at that point. Now you're looking at the left foot. Yep, it did go out. Yep, it's that's correct, right? I stand corrected, and I think that may change. Ragason, I don't you can tell by yeah. his body language. Yeah, I don't he know. He was pretty convinced. I don't know how Ragason, you know, thought that, but right there. Well, he's got a good, a good glance at that yeah, left foot. Right. Yeah, he does. <laughs> good job. Yeah, it's a great finish, but I... Ragason, out of Elk Grove Village, yeah. Illinois, Montini Catholic, where he won a couple titles there, you get a really good glance. The only thing is, is the left toe of Ragason, is that in the cylinder? Yes. I guess that's the only uh, thought that you could have, but it, it looks like it's outside, but by how much? And you really want to get it, spend that much time measuring it. Well, they made a quick decision, I'll say that for them. Take down Red. Green, you're down. Well, they called it two anyway. And I think, Jim, the only explanation would be what you just indicated is that toe would have been inside the cylinder. Doesn't have to be down on the mat, but rather inside that that infinite cylinder. Yeah, I don't know if that's the reason why they called it. It could have been the camera angle, too, that they had to, to work with there, but uh, we'll never know. So Roman Bravo Young with the 2 nothing lead. And what's impressive with him, too, Jim, is RBY can beat you in so many ways. He's very slick. 
But he's showing that win against Fix, and he's showing it right now. He can ride and grind on top. Yeah, he can. And that was the difference in that match, I really felt. I mean, those two were very difficult to take down. I mean, Dayton Fix, one of the best wrestlers in the world, and I think RBY, Roman Bravo Young, is as well. And, you know, he, in a different way, but, you know, it was all ground and pound in that uh, national finals match. And, you know, he was in the top position in the second period and, you know, really ground down on, on Fix and, and rode him out the whole period and was able to go ahead and get a quick Great. escape. These are the things, Jim, that fire me up in big <laughs> matches. The 2 nothing takedown, 52 seconds of riding time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you win the big ones. It is, you know, and, and the other, to, to follow up on this, if, if this match opens up a little bit, you know, it usually takes you know, at least four takedowns here to get a major, but you got to end up with finishing periods in the top position where you can. And a quick escape here, you know, makes it, a little bit more uh, easier to basically try to go for a major. This thing helps your team out. Regison slid that right leg in off the whistle. I like the way you think, Shane. I could have coached you. I could have got, <laughs> got you that that three. If you had that three takedowns, and then you got to go in for the major. You would have been right there. Look at that bat return yeah, from Regison. Love that inside trip. Again, this is a guy that that maybe it's a much little much to ask for against the, the a talented guy like. Roman Bravo Young and the defending national champion. And you see that ranking there with Ragus at eight. That's something where he can climb up that ladder right there and get right with these guys. He's got the skill set. You're not really seeing it right now because it, it's just hard to put up points on, on Roman Bravo Young. But hey, he's a guy I think they can really count on for the tournaments. 3 nothing midway through the second. Ragason was a champion in Vegas at the Cliff Keen. Beat Chris Cannon of Northwestern with a big third period, 9-5. to five. It, it. Comes in 12-3 and three this season. Still, mate, we're neutral. Was an NCAA qualifier last year down at 125. He was 1-2, and two, and we saw him against Spencer Lee at the Big Tens, and you're seeing it again tonight. He doesn't back down. That eight ranking, he's there to fight and win. Exactly right. Gets after it, and, you know, again, in the dangerous planes, situation here, I, I'm interesting to see where... Bravo Young is going to try to look for offense. He don't want to allow himself to get, you know, tied up and settle for ties that, that yeah, you can, you're not getting taken down, but you're not creating any action. And if you ever fall behind in a match, Center. trust me that they scout the heck out of people right here. They'll, they'll uh, go right to that here to hold leads. Heavy collar tied there by Ragason to end the second period. So he's within range. Ragason with the choice, he'll go on bottom. RBY had two losses during the 1920 campaign. Those two losses to Seth Gross and then Sebastian Rivera in the Big Ten Finals. Gone a long time since he's lost. And those are not bad losses. No. An NCAA champion and a third place finisher last season. So. And I remember that match with Seth Gross that was yeah. in the field house in yeah. Madison, and when he went to shake his head at this the end, close. he said, I'm this close. He put his, yeah. his thumb and his, his pointer finger together and said, I'm this close. Great confidence and from he, RBY. And he was. The leg in off the two-on-one series right there. We'll see if Ragason trying to turn into that. Now he's gonna roll come through. with the uh, roll through tilt there. He does have a count. Going to get a four counts. And what's important about this in that ride out situation you mentioned in the yes. first period here, that puts him in a situation where he's up seven nothing now. Now he's got the far wing and the near side half right there. Can he stay with that? Potentially dangerous whistle. And just like that, with riding time, which is at 107 here, you're you got a major. You, you just never know when a match is gonna break open. Right, by staying tough in the top position. And if you're Ragason, can you find a way to escape and save Michigan a team point right now? These are the battles within the battle right here these next 60 seconds. No doubt. Comes back up to his feet. A little back trip right there. He's got that arm trap one more time. RBY, I talked about it before, he is so good and memorable on his feet that you just don't appreciate how great he is on top. Now he's got a Turk locked up, Shane. He's got... No count. One count. One count. One count. He lost the Turk right there. Bottom leg Turk. 
Roman Bravo Young, 30 seconds away from a major. I'm sure he knows, but now he's over there by the Penn State bench that he's all about mat returns up there. They wanted him to stay in the top position. Chance for Ragason to come back into it. He does, he gets that, gets the escape. With 15 seconds, Ragason's on the board. It's a decision at the moment. Good fight. Now he's gonna hang on to a leg. Time is going to tick away. Maybe not. They're gonna look at it. Wow! And this is for a team pet point. This is. We're gonna take one more peek at this, I believe. I may have spoke a second too soon. Well, that'd be easy to do with the quickness of Roman Bravo Young. Yes. Lightning. This is an official review, not challenged by a corner. Roman Bravo Young out of Tucson, Arizona, went to Sunnyside High School. What a career. National champion at Penn State, of course, in high school, four-time Arizona State champion. Let's take a look at this. We have the time synced up here with this. He's able to cut the arm, goes one direction, gets all the way around. Man, that's close. No way. Pops over, come over there. We don't have a look at the clock. He clearly had the takedown at some point, but I think... There you see the reaction yeah. from Penn State. They know the significance of that takedown. No takedown. Ragason battling for the team there, Shane. He lost by seven in the duel last year. He loses by seven again, saves a team point. We saw a national champion in Nick Soriano, a national champion in Roman Bravo Young. Here comes our next national champion, Nick Lee of Penn State. Starachi and Aaron Brooks. 141 pounds, the reigning national champion, Nick Lee, undefeated at 8-0. And, oh, and it will not be Stevan Micic tonight for the Wolverines. Instead, Drew Matten. Interesting. Nick Lee wasn't able to go on Saturday against uh, Sunday against uh, Sebastian Rivera, the Rutgers meet, but then comes out here and Michich, who wrestled this past Friday in the uh, Ohio State ma match, he wasn't able to go ahead and go in this one. So, if he's all right, nice their fireman's carry type uh, attempt right there for him, trying to get his head out, pops back up into a high cross position. They're still on the mat working to get. That takedown there, and it was takedown for the national champ. 2-0 Nick Lee, the four-time All-American. A pair of fifth place finishes. He was first team All-American as the number two seed in what would have been that 2020 national tournament. And beat Jade Nyerman of Iowa in sudden victory to claim the national title, avenging the loss to the Hawkeye at the Big Ten Championships. One green, we're neutral. And you know I love his toughness, Jim. This guy just wrestles hard, hard, hard. Yeah, you brought up something to me off camera there about it, you know what he's experienced in his career at high school level and, and also at the college level. He just continues to improve and get tougher. And you know, it, 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 there's no limit to it. That summer that he had going up against guys like Zane Rutherford and others, where he's able to go ahead and put up big wins and you know make a, a, a world team basically and, and uh, qualifying for the top three anyway. And he. He's really had an impressive year Second of improvement. Down. Yes. Four to one score at the Olympic trials. Beat the top seed. Zane Rutherford at Nittany Lion, one of the all-time greats at Penn State, beat him 10 to four. Of course, it's freestyle wrestling. And then beat Yanni Diakamahalas, the second seed, 16-8 for third place. He was fantastic in Fort Worth was Nick Lee. Yeah, and it just seems like, you know, you throw that NCAA belt on and it's just what a confidence booster, particularly the way his uh, career and sequence has gone, you know, tough guy in consolations and working himself through, never giving up, wrestling all the way through a tournament. And he reminds me a little bit of Vincenzo Joseph from the standpoint of 
Vincenzo Joseph won two national titles, never won a Big Ten title. As good as Lee has been, looking for his first Big Ten crown, that puts it into perspective. Yeah, it does. We saw the same thing happen with Spencer Lee. You know, in the first two yeah. years, that was not able to win a national title, but, you know, it tells you not able to win a Big Ten title. Third year, he's able to go ahead and obviously do it in, in style. But this is... Uh, Tells you how how tough that Big Ten tournament is. It's just so that's such a meat grinder. Beautiful. And of course, 141 pounds. The top five in the country all hail from the Big Ten. <laughs> Get us to Lincoln, Nebraska <laughs> in early March. Let's go. Yeah. It's just it's just going to go on the wind of your enthusiasm, Shane. I want to enjoy every minute of Big Ten wrestling yeah, I, I can't until wait. then, but that is going to be one heck of a weekend. Look right. at Lee. Constant pressure and attack. Another finish, his third takedown inside of 25 seconds. Yeah, good job of attacking there. That's the side he likes to attack to, that uh, right leg of his opponent. He'll come up hard. Again, physically puts a lot into his top position and not always getting rewarded for it, but he's making a physical statement. Let's take a look at that first takedown. It would impress me about this, Shane. Again, tack the same leg that we were looking at just before. Okay. But look at the finish, okay? Matt squares up on this. Look where he finishes off this. He actually switches off right there. It comes to the head to the other side to finish the double leg. All right? So this man can attack both sides of the body. Love to see that. He'll start second period on bottom, quickly to his feet. Matt looking for a return. Got a little out of position, and Lee makes him pay with the reversal, now 8-2. to two. Look for him to maybe work a little bit in the top position to see, you know, you got to have a guy that's going to be willing to go ahead and get up off of their belly right there, Still red. see if anything opens up. He's clamped down pretty good. At this stage, you want to go, probably just go with the takedowns, maybe working feet to back. We're, We're neutral, center. 3-3 three, three on the team scoreboard. Soriano victorious for the Wolverines at 125. RBY, the winner at 133. Center. Yeah, looking for something that maybe like, a, you know, the shot, maybe that inside trip. That's what he's able to go ahead and get to. But elbow pass situation right there is going to shelf it, Get try to get to the far ankle, Two. right? Matten kind of bails on it right there. He collects the takedown. The word I would use to describe Nick Lee, relentless. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, there's the great pressure in the top position. And, you know, you know, Drew Matten in a, in a tough duty situation right there. We're, this, we're expecting to see Michic out there. And, and uh, we know that Michic has a fantastic skill set, great finisher, student of the sport. Have to take a lot for him not to be out here in this situation because he would gain a lot from being a, uh, in a match with the national champions. Here comes a tilt. Here the four count, four near fall for Nick Lee. Matten is a three-time NCAA qualifier, a couple times at 125, and most recently at 141 this past March out of Delta, Ohio. Three-time state champion. We'll see his brother coming up at 149. Of course, the Lees at Penn State. You have Nick Lee and his brothers Joe and Matt on the team as well. Now the Matten brothers find themselves in a in integral position for this meet. You know, Drew Matten trying to keep this thing within range, not give up too many team points. And then Cole Matten coming up a little bit later in, in what could be, you know, pretty close to being a toss-up. You look at that upper half with Penn State, of course, if you are Michigan, 149, 157, and 165. Those are big weight classes to compete and win. Yeah. Riding time at 2.51. That is locked up for Nick Lee. Snap down there, go behind. Reaching up the arm right there. Look for him to come back up because Matt really not. He's getting dominated right now, but, but see this a lot of times. This is the old move that Tony Ramos kind of made famous for the Hawkeyes right there. And he whips him over into a, they're still down in that down position, but into that trouble, double trouble back point situation that you, you have when you have a man dominated. If I remember right, was that Jordan Conway from Penn yeah, State inside yeah. Carver Hawkeye? It was deafening inside that arena. Two more. Again, a situation here if you're Drew Matten. 
Fight for your team right here. Easier said than done, but he's in some trouble. He is. He got the outside cradle locked up there. It's really tough to turn that with the lock closer to the knee than the head. And he's really putting a lot of pressure on the head. A lot of pretty tough for Matt to kind of stay in this thing. 18-6 score after that escape from Matten. So Nick Lee is a takedown and a ride out from a tech fall here at 141. Looking for the inside trip right now, see if that's available here to uh, just hit the straight go behind off the shot. This makes it 20 to six with riding time, 21-6. That's, if he just keeps him down right here, he's got the uh, tech fall. Lee's got the wrist. Second stall call, 21-6. Yep, should be over with, yeah, tech fall. So he'll collect the five team points. Nick Lee with his 25th tech fall of his career. Now 105 and 13 in his illustrious career for Penn State. The national champion and number one ranked Nick Lee, the tech fall for Penn State at 141. Boy, the pace this guy's wrestling with is impressive. The team to be able to do it, but they got great competition in the Lions here who seem to be firing on all cylinders. Plenty of great action ahead as we kick off the second half. 165 pounds and All-American and Cameron Amin had a great season. A year ago was 14 and four. This season comes in seven and two. And Brady Berge, one of the more interesting stories in NCAA college wrestling, was coaching at South Dakota State. Had some unfinished business. And Damian Hahn was a national champion for Minnesota under Jay Robinson. The head coach for the Jackrabbits said, hey, go scratch that itch. And here he is back with the Nittany Lions. Yeah, such a big match here for Cam Amin, getting back in the lineup there. Here's it's Crafty, just like, uh, like his brothers and cousins. We have not seen him since the Cliff Keen in Vegas early December. He finished fifth in Vegas for the Wolverines. Michigan was third as a team behind Nebraska and Ohio State. I believe he was poked in the eye. Yeah, that wasn't his best tournament that, that we've seen him, and we've seen him show a little bit of, a, quite a bit of ability here. In a weight class, Shane, I think it's gotten a lot tougher year over year. 165 in the Big Ten for the top 10 from the Big Ten. Three-time Big Ten champion Alex Marinelli ranks number one. No score, 45 seconds in. Amin from Bright, Michigan. He was a three-time state champion at Detroit Catholic Central High School. A lot of great talents out of that program. And Brady Berge from Manorville, Minnesota, went to Casson Manorville, where he won three state crowns. And so far, I like the way Bergie's doing his, his, his stalking, a little bit kind of moving in at the right angles, kind of sh cutting off that shot. Even though he's leading the leg that I think that Amin wants to get to, he's, he's just, you know, his activity level with his hands are a lot faster, or seems to be a bit faster anyway, just a step ahead of Amin right now, keeping a lot of weight on that collar tie. Brady Berge, sixth in two appearances at the Big Ten Championships. Two-time NCAA qualifier was two and two down at 149 back in 2019. And had that injury at the National Championships in March after a pair of victories. So Thank disappointing you, finish and easily understood on how, why he'd want to come back. 60 seconds remaining in the first. Looking for a mean to pick up his pace. Oh, ankle pick right there by Berge. He's able to go ahead and can't collect the uh, second leg there. Really well done. Critical time in this match and in this dual meet here for the, the Wolverines. Get a quick escape and answer it back, possibly. A ride out is huge for the Lions. Exactly. Was just going to bring that up. Another one of those situations. Return there from Berge. Saw this from Roman Bravo Young at 133. Got the takedown. And about 50 seconds of riding time, he finished that period on top. You gotta get greedy here, and it's tough. It's not easy to keep a guy like this down. But if you're able to do it, it is such a difference maker. Two nothing first periods. These are huge. Nice little forward trip right there. Right on top. Brady Berge 
Really good wrestling IQ. Three, go and get set. Face to me. Guys, been around the world. 2018 at Junior World Bronze Medalist. World team member in 2019 Three, for the U23s. Man, cover legal. And all the way back in 2015, cadet world team Man. member. So this guy has been around. Well, Three, well just choice. for you, Shane, I'm going to focus on the mat return and not the takedown here. This Three, is a critical point, down. about 30 seconds Second left in the match. See how he twists him around a little bit, gets his feet moving, and then pops the hips in. All right, that's, that might, might, might make the show. I, I love, love this. <laughs> we want to see your mat returns. Hashtag B1G mat returns. Hashtag B1G mat returns. Nice work there by Amin to get that quick escape inside yeah. of 10 seconds. It really was. And so he's 56 seconds of riding time, so that's not going to be a huge factor. So Amin has to get busy on his feet. And like I said, I like the pace. I like the stalking. I like the footwork that I was seeing out of, of Berge in the first part of the match. And he was able to go ahead and take advantage. He's coming right back at that ankle pick that he hit. Amin was seventh at the national tournament, went in as an 11th seed was third at the Big Tens. Nice win over Peyton Robb of Nebraska, four to one in that third place match. Robb, of course, back down to 157 for the Cornhuskers this season. Again, this is a stage in the match there. You know, I guess you could wait a little bit later for the third period to see what happens there, but look for him to really kind of work the head and follow it up with some sort of committed shot. Again, too early to shut down for Berge, so he and it's going to see an a, a aggressive Amin, and, and maybe Amin puts his foot in a bucket, and maybe come back to that ankle pick right there with the uh, fingers, with the activity fingers. level that Amin needs to show at this point. You don't want to shut down on your scoring. I mean, you, you know what? It, it's it's too early in the match to say not to take what's there with your style, just because you have a two-one lead. Half a minute here in the second period. Bergie with the takedown. And a ride out in the first, a mean quick escape in the second. See how these two play it late in the second period. Collar tie from Berge on the left side. Again, long layoff there for Amin. Not coming out firing here in, this, in his debut. Been about six weeks. Yeah. And here is his father, Sam Amin. He's always into it. <laughs> well, he's pointing at the heart. And, and, you, know, he wants it. you know, sometimes you just get out there. Your warm-up is not where you want it to be. You just, you know, you, it's, you learn so much about your body in these efforts here when you get out there in big meets. It's just different. And, you know, it's... You know you're not firing the way you need to be firing, but you just kind of got to be able to draw from inside something you've learned along the way. And me now trailing three to one needs a takedown and and a, you know probably two takedowns to win this match. And he hasn't had a real threatening attack up no, to no, this point. No, not at all. I mean he doesn't. There's there's the, the shot. On. Yeah, and, and Bergie can expect that. And, you know, get slightly off the tracks. You know, don't be right there in front of him here. Just get slightly off the tracks where you can go ahead and create some of your offense. And he's staying right Fingers in the middle gentlemen. and presenting himself. And so. Berkey maintains really good position, center of the mat. Yeah. And it's just, no, there's nothing flashy, but he's a good lead holder. So, and this is where you have to double up, triple up on your, on your activity level on your shots. You, you can't, you might be able to get a, a warning or follow it up with an underhook or, or just... You, it's, it's just go time. You just got to change the gentlemen. pace of this match. Work through it. Seen Brady Berge in a lot of these kind of matches. Doesn't take a ton of shots necessarily, but he's pretty efficient when he does. And we saw that in that first period. And see that little jab step that he did right there. And then he kind of made, made, made a move. And, and he had a great when you can use your quickness to go ahead and get your opponent to react, even though he sh should be the one shooting. And you're, you're getting him off base there with that little jab step. Time running out on the Wolverine. Amin, he needs a takedown to tie it. Boy, this match, this win really Finger, makes it center. tough for the team. Center. Lions got to be happy about this win. It's almost like they've stole one. Brady Berge at 165 pounds knocks off the All-American Cam Amin. Three more for Penn State. A man running on a short runway, but getting to altitude quick. 
Take care, gentlemen. Good match, guys. Brady Berge. Good win in Ann Arbor. 174 pounds, the reigning national champion, Carter Storacci of Penn State, Logan Massa of Michigan. It was last year, Jim. This victory put Storacci on the map. It really did. It just, it just changed the whole trajectory of the season. You know, we didn't really know what he had. We heard that he was tough and all that, but this little se sequence here, he was able to get back points. In, a, in the tiebreaker, it was just huge, and he just built on that momentum all the way to an NCAA championship finish, Big Ten runner-up. Just got better and better as the season went on. I was so impressed in that match with Massa last year. There must have been six, seven, eight times he just fought out of really tough positions. I thought he was dead to rights and gave himself a chance to win it at the end. He certainly did, but you know, Massa, that was where his season, you know, he never kind of got back on track. He, he worked his way back in the consolations and finished fifth place in, in the national tournament, but he really never had the clear path, I, I guess would be the best way to put it. He got beat a couple times in the national tournament by Bernie Truax from uh, Cal Poly, but that, you know, both, both the trajectories of both seasons kind of went in different directions in that match so early. And, you know, there's, it was a strange year last year. You didn't get a lot of chances to kind of make up, you know, and, and, and improve your seed, so to speak. And, and uh, but that, that's the way it works. That's the season. That's the season that was, we were given. And nice oh, job of Starachi just running to that single leg. Yeah, on the counter. Got it really tight. Tries to roll through right there. He's able to go ahead and get a Granby diving in on that ankle, but I don't think it's going to be... No, no. He's got the right hand through there. He, oh, he comes back with a spiral right jam right there. Stays on the mat. Takedown for Storacci, the 2021 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Fell in the Big Ten Final. Michael Kemmer of Iowa, 7-2. And then two weeks later in sudden victory, knocked off the Hawkeye 3-1. to one. But just also the wrestling that Storacci did in the summertime. He was beating some solid dudes out there at the international level. He had a great summer. Storacci out of Cathedral Prep. Two-time champion. He leads it 2-1 midway through the first period. He was third at the World Team Trials in September. First Center round gentlemen. lost, then he won five straight. Beat Jason Null for third. Unbelievable, yeah. He, I was in the Penn State wrestling room on Monday and got snowed in after the broadcast right there. And he with the post, gentlemen. had a chance to talk to Fingers. a lot of people. To actually talked to the <laughs> Olympic champ, the David grip. Taylor. and So complimentary of Strachi and how seriously he takes Tell this me. sport. And grip, not gentlemen. only with his talent and athletic grip, ability, gentlemen. but just the way he prepares every day. It's just all on. I mean, just no, 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 he just, just gets after it. He's won 16 in a row, nine of his 11 victories this season, bonus point victories. Right there with that little over, over uh, hook shrug there that he's doing, and you're able to get that when a guy's kind of leaning into you, but Strachi could feel that. Now double underhook situation. He was the three seed at the national tournaments. No, we're out. Correction. As we'll come back to the center. In the semis, beat Demetrius Romero of Utah Valley 2 0. He was the two seed. Then I mentioned he comes back and beats Kemmerer. Grip, knocks gentlemen. off the Grip. top Get two seeds to stand atop the podium. Just a tough, gritty wrestler, Carter Storacci. And I don't think, you know, while it was happening, we probably weren't giving him enough credit for how physically he was. And right here's the guy's head stuffed on a double leg. He's going to switch off to a single. Wizard from Massa. Yeah, he's, see what he does to finish this. Break Go off the mat, break, no break, time left there. But here's some early action here. Look at it, he's pushing in, creating that go-behind situation, gets to the leg, right? But now he's gonna finish this on, off the roll through, get all the way across, and almost into a spiral ride position right there. He finishes it on the other side of the body. We've seen that a couple times with these guys. That Nick Lee finish. That he had just, you know, you're on one side, but you end up finishing all the way on the other side of the body. Good stuff. Massa looking for a return. Storacci with the escape. And he extends his lead. Shot there for Massa, his best attempt so far. Yep, he's got to be able to go ahead and he's got the, the grip unlocked right there. He's going to try to create a little hip separation to make his turn. He's got to keep his ankles clean in the process. 
Gonna go back the other direction. Good scramble. Massa looking to tie this one up at three. Yep. Is he gonna try to get, keep those in? He can't get his, his uh, thigh out. Now he gets spread out. Ankle to shoelace or face to shoelace situation. And now Strachi has a little bit of elevation and they call a stalemate. If you are Massa right there, Jim, how do you finish that quick? Yeah, it, 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 that just tells me how strong Strachi is, that hidden strength that he has right there, because he finishes at almost 99% of the guys he wrestles. Work center, gentlemen, work center. Remember, this is a National Open tra champion, Logan Massa. He's, he's, Massa's been, you know, a great wrestler on the international level. Two-time All-American, Logan Massa. Stay clean with the post, At the gentlemen. Big Tens, he's been second, fifth, third and fourth, was fifth in St. Louis. Three-time state champion out of St. John's High School in St. John's, Michigan. Four-time finalist. Straight on double leg there by Massa. Could it be tough to score against Starachi straight on? Yeah, it is, but, but no Starachi has it. an opportunity to go ahead and maybe try to do something with that, but Massa's doing a nice job Great of tying count. up that left elbow of Starachi. How do you break through the, the, the head hands defense of these guys? It's really, you know, misdirection shot. I don't know. I mean, it's just look at these guys, these Penn State wrestlers in this upper weight level here with Aaron Brooks, it's the same thing. How do you break through? Fingers, gentlemen. To the third three. period. Choice, Will Lewan, two down. takedowns for Michigan. The rest of the team combined does not have a takedown. It's Kale Sanderson out of his chair. Red cover legal. Red. I'll give you a stat, Jim. When you look Go at ahead. Penn State's seven All-Americans, so far this season, 236 takedowns to seven. Wrap your head around that stat. Now, could be possibly another one here with Stracci switching off to a double right there. Wow, that was well done. You know, that looked... That, that looks like the, the technique that Kemmerer uses on the other leg when he knocks a guy down off that crackdown. Really well done. Hey, hey, go to your corner. Go to your corner, Red. And, and the challenge. challenge brick is out. Yeah. See the confusion by Logan Massa. That stat was entering this duel, by the way. As you said, Jim, they've added to that. And it's perfectly... He wanted to know, Kale wants to know why that brick was, they allowed the brick. I think it may have come out a little bit late. This is an official's challenge, not a coach's challenge. Yeah, let's get a couple looks at this and see what we're working at here. Okay, there's clearly an escape, all right, well. Gave the one point escape right there. You can see the one finger up there. And then he switches off to a double, and I, I think that's it. Right? I don't know what there's anything to argue about. Okay. So, did he get the, he gave the escape right here. You got to be alert. Yeah. All right. Jumps right back in, cracks him down, switches off to the double, right? Has the hip down. thing I can think of is it's his hand off the mat or something is that I know we have a little short boundary here there you see Aaron Brooks reigning national champion and two-time Big Ten champion he's up next at 184 for Penn State let's take one more look and see if there's a hand that went out or something that you know they haven't overturned anything all could it be perhaps, Jim, that Michigan wants a reversal and not the escape and the takedown? Is that possible? Well, it, the escape would be given to Massa in this situation. I don't think a reversal would apply. So, Colin yeah. Overturned. There was no escape. Red is still in control. That's Green what I was down. referring yeah. to. Yeah. So it, it wouldn't be a reversal, just continuous action. But you could see clearly where he gave up one point. Relax, we're going to fix time. Relax, we're going to fix time. And it's actually the kind of the Massa kind of took his time accepting the escape, and and uh, when Starachi fired back in, strange sequence there. I thought that was a little weak. We take a look at the first shot that we had of this. I'm looking at the officials, see if his 
That's one, and he drops back in. See, the official was giving him one. So maybe not enough re reaction time here on the call. So yeah, that was what I that's yeah, what I was saying. Not enough reaction time, but still red. Still red. Strachi working the, the mat return. He's done that back heel still action red. a couple times, and so he's going to go ahead and cut him. So again, that sequence has given Massa all the opportunity here now to go ahead and get back into this match. Riding time a non-factor in a one-point match. 120 remaining here in regulation. Center, gentlemen, center! And the one thing that Massa does really well is he can attack below the knee. We've seen that before, and he'll dive Great. in, and then he'll get to a he'll get to a single off of that, and, and you know, long finish. So he needs a little bit of time to finish. Can Massa do it back to back weeks? Of course, last week at Ohio State, eight points in the third center, period to center. beat Ethan Smith, ten to five. That was a huge Have win for Michigan. He's down by one. Right now, he's got Stracci just thinking defense right now. That's you can tell that he's he's not reacting offensively. He's not looking for a shot. So that was the stall warning. Call on Stracci. Next call would tie it. So Stracci's got to make sure he keeps his feet circling. But to the center as he does there. And if Massa can get out and get a couple more even half attempts. Now a bear hug attempt. He's coming in there hard. He's got an opportunity as they go off the mat. Out of bounds. But this is a situation where if he can keep the action moving forward here, he might get the call. This crowd has been sitting on their hands here for a while. See if they have an opp opportunity. There's another attempt. Should be a big pace in the final 20 seconds. One more. Is he going to get it? It's, it's, it's really relying on this crowd to help him out. Strachi in on that shot. He's wrestling right there. He's going to hang on. That is a time suck. And Carter Storacci able to stave off the rally for Massa. The Nittany Lion wins it 3-2. Just knows how to win those tight matches. A lot of maturity. Good match, guys. Shake hands, guys. Shake hands. Carter now 12-0. You're the returning na national champion. You're going to have a lot of matches like that. Brady Berge and Carter Storacci victorious for the Nittany Lions. A one versus two showdown. That's next here on the Big Ten Network. Two, here we go at 184 pounds. A pair of Big Ten champions and Aaron Brooks ranked number one and Miles Amin down from 197 where he claimed the Big Ten championship last season. Miles Amin, the Olympic bronze medalist representing San Marino. Aaron Brooks already a two-time Big Ten champion, and he won the national title last March in St. Louis. What are you expecting here, Jim, in the first minute, minute and a half? Well, I think these guys are going to come hard with some really hard collar ties. Amin is a guy who likes to attack the right leg of, of, of Brooks, and I think Brooks can, was, is, is got the same type of technique. He's looking to attack the right leg of uh, of a, a mean, so I think there'll be a feeling out process. But one thing I've noticed about the matches with both these guys is that their tempo doesn't go down, all right? It, it actually increases during the course of the match. Amin is an elite, elite scrambler when it comes to, and we saw that in the match uh, against Romero in that match where he was able to scramble in overtime to get the win. So he's patient, uh, he's a good scrambler. You get in on his leg, you're about 25% of the way there, and it's difficult to get in on his leg. For Brooks, he stalks you. He comes out in that wide square stance. I mean, and he just has that uh, great timing on his reach to get to the shots. And he's good in this position, the front headlock position, to be able to go ahead and create offense. Miles, I mean, a four-time All-American. He's been fourth, third, third, third. He's been at 174, mentioned 197 last year. Here he is at 184, three-time Big Ten finalist. Got that elusive title last March at Penn State when he beat Eric Schultz in Nebraska 7-3 in the Big Ten final. No score, 90 seconds remaining here in the first. You see that, uh, Brooks taking territory. You know, he's, that's his style. He's going to go ahead and march you to the edge. He's excellent at finishing on that edge. And as I said before, 
I mean, just very difficult to finish on. I don't know if there's really much of an edge. Center, each each guy does, doesn't have no, a difficult time up. getting out from underneath, but I think this, this will be settled on the feet. Amin had that crazy scramble with Caleb Romero in sudden victory to win last Friday night in Columbus. Again, there's the ankle pick right there. Now he comes right underneath. Again, you're 25% the way there with, with Amin. He just has that feel. Notice how he's setting a lot of weight back into his rear right there. He's got his legs spread out pretty wide right there. He's broken down a little bit, but you can see the strength of Brooks and it's just be enough to stay on me. And I was just going to ask you, in that situation, if you're Amin, you are hanging on for dear life and you want the stalemate. That's a, that's a win for Amin right there. That's a win for Amin, but that's why I said he's, you're, you get to the leg you're, and it's difficult to get to his leg, but you're 25% there. He just has all the great feel and that's why he's a great international wrestler as far as his bronze medal. But these these two, both these guys are elite. You know, it's... I. I how can we not? How can you not say, in a lot of respects, that we're not walk, watching? You know, the winner of this is a top five guy in, in any weight class. And Brooks, 2017 Cadet World Champ, he was junior silver in 2018. When I say top Down five guys, the top five of all the weights. I mean, these these are. He's only got one loss. That was to Taylor Venz of Nebraska in the 2019-2020 season. Grip, gentlemen, 38 and one for his career. Out of that, out of that, both up. Out of the grip, sit. And both these guys don't get flustered about anything. They're, they're poised, they don't really. And here's right. his father, I mean, Mike Amin. Down, you'll face me. National Three finalist, wrestled for Michigan in the late 80s. Great guys, great, great family man. Hold set, Green. Red cover legal. Can tell he's zoned in. He is. A little bit different from Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Sam was the wild man. He, he likes to, you know, he's, he wears it on his sleeve, and Mike is uh, more subdued in his approach, but the, the same things are happening uh, underneath the uh, chest. Ankle pick there and a good trip, and return from Brooks. Gets behind the hips, and just like that, he's got 20 seconds of riding time. Yep, yeah, he's got to try to stay with him here, stay with it, but now he covers the fingers right there. He should be able to turn in. Brooks dropping down and going to get the mat return. It's not really a return, but it, it, enough action as they go off to get a new start. You and know, we speak about this in these matches set. all the time. It might take four, five, 10, 15 second goes Let's to set. get to where you got to be. Well, that's true. And, and, and when there's a zero, zero match going on here, you want to test the guy in the bottom position. You want to get some dividends out of this, making him work hard to get out from underneath. Had that left ankle scooped up momentarily. Good forward pressure. Cross wrist ride right there was huge. Picking up that cross wrist is huge. Now he's got that half Nelson working on the far, using the forearm now. He, he took the bait, basically. He took the, the, the center, he took his hand off the cross wrist, which was the ride right there. It went to the half Nelson and then Mean was able to get out of it. So riding time at 51 seconds for Brooks. I mean, with the, the grip, escape, gentlemen. our Set first tally the on the board. Here there's a 1-2 showdown at 184. Out of the Big grip, 10 gentlemen. at the weight class, Set. five of the top eights in the intermat rankings. Shot there off the whistle from the Nittany Lion, Brooks. Brooks, the 2020 Big 10 freshman of the year. First team in 2020 All-American. Beat Trent Hidley of NC State 3-2 to claim his first national title. Half a minute, second period. And Brooks, once again, he takes territory. It is style. He'll march a guy to the edge and wait for him to come back and, and work that snap position and get to a leg. But he is totally into all Improve right it, with gentlemen. taking Improve territory, it. closing the gap. And he gets to his shot, and he drives the guy off frequently. It's kind of like you, you, you almost wish he could get those things in the middle of the mat, but you know, sometimes you don't do that. Aaron Brooks this season takedowns, he's got 45, opposition one. Spent a year at the training center after leaving Hagerstown, Maryland, North Hagerstown, where he was a four time Maryland state champ. Look at the cross wrist ride right there. This is the ride. If, if you wanted to say with that, say that roll attempt right there, jumped into the half Nelson. Right there, and I think the mean kind of baited him into that with that roll action right there. Fake the shot, that wasn't really a fake, it was a committed attempt on that side roll. Gave him that and then was able to step back up with it. That was all 
Great work by Mina getting out in there pretty timely. And he's good in the top position. We've seen him, you know, good set of legs, scooping up the near leg. Again, a ride out, he wins the match. Yeah, has the claw in. Near ankle of Brooks scooped up. Yep. Gets the wrist. But here's Brooks working wow. up. Great wow. work. Wow. Again, the, the effort that these guys put into not being complacent, realizing that they're up against the top level guy in the top position. That work with the hips, able to go turn one direction, come back, and just be enough to free yourself up. Good work. There is some horsepower on the mat here inside the Chrysler Center in, in Ann Arbor. 1-1, one, one, each with an escape. And just the visual is bad, you know, with, with for Amin right now. Is it, he's got a guy that's stalking into him. He gets to his shot. Single. He's pretty good at... Look at the hips there from Brooks. Amin working up. Tell you what, nice job by Amin coming back up. He's got the leg hook now, and Brooks stuffs the head to the outside, but able to clasp on right here, get himself into a better position to score. I don't know, it, punting would be a good option here for Brooks, but he's going to drive back into him, and boy, Amin just battling in there. Got the elbow down on the mat. Look at him continue to drive. The defense from Brooks. Elbow deep, Shane gets up to his feet. But he's smashed down once again on the shoot tops. The hip pressure from Brooks. He broke the grip and gets to the far ankle. He'll score here. Inside 20 seconds. 3-1 Brooks as he scores off the attack from Amin. What an effort Amin put in to try to get that single leg. 3-1 Aaron Brooks. Wow. Outstanding. Oh. Both men looking to score though, through that whole scramble. I thought for a second be, Brooks would be better served just to punt, all right, get to the defense, but he looked to score on that all the way through the technique as really well done by both wrestlers. When you're Aaron Brooks, you never punt, Jim. You're always going for it. <laughs> Take a look at the winning score here on this replay. Boy, these are gonna be fun battles in the Big Ten. Not just that he knocks him down. Most guys will go ahead and give it up right there. Right in, in that position, that's the final score right there. He pops the hips in and collects that risk. The Penn State bench fired up as their national champ at 184. Thrill of victory and the agony of defeats. That's a big win for Aaron Brooks. I tell you what, I mean, battled hard in that when he got in that leg, looking to score the whole time. 197 pounds, Max Dean ranked number two in the country, Patrick Brucky. For Michigan, ranked eighth in the country. Brucky, a two-time All-American at Princeton, was fourth in 2019. And in 2020, was a first-team All-American for Coach Chris Ayers. I'm still trying to figure out, Jim, how Brooks didn't give that up. Well, particularly when he got the, the left elbow was deep, but we could, you know, you could talk for days about what just happened right there in that, that's, that single leg sequence there. Again, that's that shot is what has put the mean at the international level where he's been able to do that against some of the best in the world. And that defense was fantastic. Dropping Bru in on the single leg is Brucky. And you see he's Brucky working for the uh, uh, Dean looking for that near ankle. Brucky able to follow, but he wasn't able to collect the far leg. So Dean's still in a pretty decent position. Yeah, he grabs the far ankle, ankle. Yeah, gets the far ankle, but it's a little no bit take late. Down yet. A little bit late because now they're faced to shoelace. Dean looking to drive back in. He's got a little bit better elevation. And he's able to free his right ankle. Yeah, now Brucky's back underneath. This like looks like a couple of 25-pounders going at it, Shane. Probably going to get a stalemate. There it is. Brucky out of Orland Park, Illinois, wrestled at Carl Sandburg High School, won a state title as a senior in 2017. Dean, a two-time state champion from Lowell, Michigan. Of course, the brother of two-time national champion Gabe Dean. Brother Dave wrestled at Minnesota, or Father Dave, rather. No score halfway through this first period. And this is a match, Jim, you were especially looking forward to. Yeah, this weight class is so wide open. You see the two ranking of, of, of Dean, and two through 12 might be 
equal in a lot of ways. There's a beautiful takedown there, elbow pass to the far ankle, drives right through and collects the takedown. As I was mentioning, two through 12 in this weight class is, is I don't know, I, it's shuffle the deck every time you're gonna get a different result. Four of the top six in the weight class from the Big Ten. I remember, the escape. Dean was able to do his damage, you know, as a national finalist at 184. So the question for me is how how is he going to look up at this weight class? And I saw him against Rutgers, and the match was with uh, Bullzak, and he and Bullzak is a really a strong guy from Rutgers, and he's can raise a lot of havoc. But that was an exciting match, and Dean was able to do a lot hey, action, technically, gentlemen. get to the leg, win the scrambles. Really wrestled, wrestled well, but this is this Rocky is a different animal with his quickness, his position, strength. Another shot from Brookie in short time. But on the shoot tops underneath, not a good place to be underneath the hips of Dean. He's done a nice job of flaring his knees out there, not going over to his hip. Break, stalemate, break. Max Dean. National finalist, Jim, as you mentioned, at 184. That was back in 2019. In 2020, he redshirted. Then he was at Cornell. They canceled the season. So it's been a while since he's been on the mat. Brucky at 2-1, score to the second period. Here's that takedown. Yeah, the elbow pass just off to the uh, left right here. He just kind of creates a little space, comes that elbow pass, goes to the far ankle, and collects the, the opposite leg with the shoulder rotation. Just beautifully done. He's just an explosive wrestler, and, and that's what, you know, moving up to this weight class, that's what you got to be aware of here, a different level of explosiveness with these bigger guys. 2-2 two, two with that escape. If you remember that run he had, he went Oh yeah, it's as the five seed, and he beat Miles Martin, the top seed, 5-4, to four, and then he fell to Drew Foster. He, he can wrestle. He can give it. Got a near side cradle. He's got him knocked to his hip. Right there, collects the, collects the takedown. Second takedown of the match for Brucky. Follows back behind. Dean able to get the quick escape. Just a one point match. Right, a lot of action here. This Both these guys getting after it. Both matches here, these higher ranked guys are really taking territory. They're moving their feet, you know, moving off their ties, they're in and out. Kale clean, Sanderson Dylan. says that Max Dean has fit in perfectly. Super consistent in practice and competition. Just a really good fit, strong character guy. And, and I, I guess Carter Storacci against Rutgers last week. His car broke down. Dean's the one that came and helped him. If you're <laughs> Carter Storacci, you can get a good ride in State College. You're national champ. 42nd second period. You talk about a guy fitting in. Patrick Brucky is taking them, you know, he's getting his master's in engineering and, and construction management. So a guy that's already got an uh, engineering degree at the University of Princeton has got a great future ahead of him. Stay clean, gentlemen. Guys Late are, in the second period. Yep. A little surprised that, that Dean hasn't fingers. been able to get to his shot to uh, the, uh, Brucky's right leg. He's able to live on that. On the strength of a pair of takedowns, Brucky takes a one-point lead to the third. So here's where the, the quick escapes haven't, haven't hurt Dean that much. It's not going to be a riding time point, so, it, you know, probably not going to, uh, you know, Bullsack Bull was a guy that got out pretty easily against uh, Dean, but... I don't expect a committed ride from Dean against Brucky here. So he needs to win this on his feet. Has that single leg and drives the Wolverine out of bounds. You know, riding the whole period, it really doesn't you know, get the riding time point to tie, but you hate to be in those mat return situations late and about, particularly you have this much time to be able to try to score on your feet. Probably gonna be tough to hold Brucky down. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 my free. Seals off the left side. Drop into an ankle. Staying with it though, staying with the ride. I mean, if you're Dean right here, looks pretty committed. Yep, he does. Looks committed. He's got the ankle back right there. And 
trying to flatten him out, maybe getting Brucky to, to work a little bit in that bottom position before he tries to go after it. I don't think there's been any stall calls yet. Something to keep in mind. Got of that. course, if you're Dean right here, you're a turn away from taking a lead. Maybe he feels that's his best position. Keep it legal. Keep it legal. And try to get a little more elevation to get that bow and arrow. Go elbow deep with that. He's got the forearm on it, but again, this is the strength that, at 197 that we're still on, gentlemen. Improve it. Got to adjust to. Still and he's building that riding time right there on the edge. Good man awareness. You see his left toe inside that cylinder. Yeah, looking at the coaches right now, what they're asking him to do. And we'll go back to the center with 41 seconds. So you see Casey Cunningham getting into Kale's ear about what the strategy is here. If you're going to beat him, Jim, you got to ride him. At this stage, you got to try to go ahead and get it. I think you got to stay committed to that ride. Yes. You've already done it to this point. Michigan crowd comes to life. But it's so difficult now with the two sweaty bodies and, you know, keep a guy down, a good athlete down like this. Good work there from Dean, though. Goes that single leg, then he works up. Now he'll look for a return. Now going to drop down. He's dropped down into that crackdown position. He has the leg. No he's stall okay. warning. No stall calls. Yep. Elbow deep on it. He's on the inside part of the leg, so that makes it a little bit easier to finish. I'd walk him off the mat right here, get a new start. Going to stay right there on the edge. Great IQ and awareness from Dean. Well, he, he's looks like he's worn Brucky down a little bit here with this ride. There's no movement now in the bottom position. And we are going to sudden victory. Two minutes now. And one thing about the, 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 the mat returns that he did, Shane, they were all going, they were single leg finishes. Yes. From one side of the, of the leg to the other side of the leg. And so that gives you some confidence if you get back in on those legs, how you can score. 4-4, four, four, two minutes on the clock. Gentlemen, two minutes. Two minutes on victory. Wrestle till I stop you. Check. Lucky with a the shot. There's the front headlock. There's the shot I was looking for, but he wasn't able to finish it. Brucky active right now. He's got a second wind. Good opportunity missed by Dean. Oh, it's, a it's a takedown. A win by Dean. Went back to the well on that ankle pick, and Dean reacted to it. Shoulder shrugged it. Collected the takedown. Takedown of the match is brought to you by Resolite. Here's the winning takedown. Same technique that they did before, reaching down on that. He just felt it, measured it, and I think that that ride that he had all the way through the third period. Looking forward to this match, Jim. Greg Kirkley at rank fourth. Mason Paris ranked number two, the national finalist. Both these guys are undefeated. Really intrigued to see how this match is wrestled at heavyweight. Well, Kirkley, it's a little more healthy this year. He wrestled part, he just got a late start to last year, and it was a weird year to begin with, and then, you know, became an All-American in that, you know, pretty darn tough weight class, but he just wasn't able to go, but he's 240 pounds uh, this year, but he's going against one of the best, you know, a guy who scored seven bonus points in the national tournament, three falls and a, and a, a major decision, and of course got beat by the eventual Olympic champion here, Gable Stevenson, but this is a guy who puts heavyweights on their back, and we talked about this off camera, but he keeps them there. Yes, you know? he does. Yeah, you, you go to your back, you're going to be stuck. And Mason Paris, Jim, 33 falls in his career. 33 falls in 79 matches. 19 straight victories with bonus points. The last time Paris had a victory without bonus, 2020 Big Ten semis, he beat Trent Hilger 4 nothing. That's a crazy stat. He's really tough with the near arm far leg. And let's take a look at the, the stance that uh, Kurt Lee is out there with. I mean, not going to give up that right arm, right? His right arm, see how he's working with his right, his, his right arm is grabbing, he's waiting, he's grabbing that, wants to have a hold of that wrist. You come to the collar tie real hard there, he's peeling that off. And that can get guys uncomfortable with their best shot. I mean, it's, you want to have to be, you want to, if that's where you want to be, and you can't get it during the course match. You get uncomfortable and out of sync. And Kirk single. Lee right it back in on a shot right there. This is elbow deep. He's able to dump him down and score. We'll see if he stays and gets the quick, gives up the quick escape. So 
Good start. These two wrestled at the Big Tens in March. It was 11-3, a major for Paris. Kirk Valiant, this season, 9-0, eight matches, bonus point victories. And last year, 10-4, battled some injuries. But he has taken away the lead arm of Mason Paris. You see that left arm? Is again, once again, Kirk Valiant hanging on that wrist. See if he... You know, a lot of times guys will go out there in the first minute or so, they're executing the game plan perfectly and, uh, you know, get a little tired and, and, and you forget where you, what, you, what you're trying to accomplish there. Right back in on that snatch single right there. Now he drops in, right, a little lower. As the knee works up, comes back up. Here he's got a great position to do the same dump, all right, and collects it again. Two easy takedowns here for Greg Kirkley from Penn State. A little bit surprised he didn't try to ride for 30 seconds, but nevertheless, two takedowns. I really like those snatch singles, Jim. You don't get caught underneath, especially at that weight class. You don't want to get underneath and carry the weight of, of Paris. Well, see, he's tied up right there on that inside wrist. That's the lean arm. That's the one that he likes to shoot to, right? Used as, as the lead arm. Now he dives in on the shot. Now he's going to drive through. So... <laughs> Great action here in this first period. Mason Paris had enough of that. I don't care if you have my wrist. I'm going to shoot anyway. Green, Both these guys getting takedowns. Chris. Let's take a look at the first one by Kirkley. He just jumps into that snatch single right there. As you mentioned, he doesn't go to his knees. Right, does a little run the pipe dump right there. And then Paris right there keeping his wrist clean this time and is just driving right forward all over. Gets him a little bit back on his haunches and drives through and ties it up. And Paris's takedown in the final 10 seconds. Trip and return from Kirk A Little bit surprised, as I said, that when he got that second takedown with 30 seconds, he didn't, didn't go to work on top like this. Yeah, well, it's right. It's something that uh, make adjustments. These guys will likely meet again. Hold set. Red cover legal. Kirk Valiant, four-time state champion from Simley. Wrestled for Will Short and gives the escape. Neutral. Really short. That's a that's a man who's a good coach. He's, he's a NCAA runner up himself. At University short. of Minnesota's yeah. son Jake wrestled at the U. Now coaching the Augsburg women's wrestling team. Yeah, just Jake Short. Collar grip, tie hard. Out of the grip. See. This was the match I was most curious to see in this duel. Heavyweight, to see the gains that Kirk Lee has made. He's had so much success. I think you can point to a couple of gains, a couple of nice takedowns. Good motion. And he slowed Mason Paris down. And it's just something as simple as that little wrist tie right there. He's, he's got the tie. 45 seconds, second period. Kirkley had beat Tate Orndorff 13-1 at the national tournament to finish seventh. The number one recruit in the country in 2019, Greg Kirkley. Yeah, right there. See the right wrist tied up, and it just totally has, has been able to thwart what Mason Paris is, wants to do. He wants to be inside on that bicep and go near arm far leg, you know, that, uh, to get after it, but he's just, that the leg's not there, and He's not getting to that bicep and totally out of his game right now. I've, I've never, I guess, you can just really see where something's wrong. He doesn't feel like he's not comfortable out there. And again, left arm tied up again with that wrist ride. One point match to the third. Kirkley will go on bottom. Well, this is a period, this is a, a position that Mason Paris is, it's really, you know, tough in, so Kirkley has got to make the big move. Can he get up? Slides a half Nelson in left side. Good at knocking him down. Now they're hand fighting in there in that position. Now he comes back up to his feet. Good work here. He's got the hand split. Skips away. 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, a huge escape. My time, my time. Leading. I don't know, but it, it just looks like Kirkley, it's it, it, a good 20, 25 pounds bigger than he was last year. Just so much talent. I think it's just been one of those situations where just hasn't been able to get on track. Now he's healthy, you know, settled in at State College. 
Doesn't have to worry about being the guy with four national champions in the room. And I mean, you look at his resume, Jim. 2017 cadet world champ, cadet runner-up in 2018, fifth at the U23s in 2019. You look at both these lineups, the international success through the age groups. Pretty impressive. Fantastic. Of course, Ohio State and Iowa following us. We'll have Penn State, Iowa next Friday night. Yeah, you mentioned their international success, but what we're seeing is we're seeing quick stand-ups, we're seeing ride-outs, we're seeing mat returns, we're seeing just guys who are skilled at wrestling. They just know how to wrestle. Tough wrestling. Yeah. Being comfortable in those uncomfortable spots. Shot off the whistle there from Kirk Leet. Yeah, there's a counter shot there, right there uh, on it. Can he, in a good position, now he's going to spin out there. He got a little loose on that shot. Seemed to be a little bit bothered by that cut or whatever. Oh, come, drops right back in on that ankle again. Now he's in a little bit better position to go ahead and finish it. We'll see if uh, he can run the pipe one more time. He's going to step up with the right foot, step back with, step back with the right foot, up with the left. Then he's goes to sweep right there. And he catches uh, Paris scrambling right there, collects the takedown. Third takedown of the match for Kirk Leitz. You hear the count, he'll work up. Up seven to five. Coffee grinder position on top. Breaks down the Wolverine as Paris puts his head on the Resolites. Yeah, just as we saw with Max Dean, you want to go ahead and try to ride him as much as you can, make Paris work to get out of this position. And if you're if you're Parrish, you just want to ditch it right here. You want to get a new start. Had that right toe in the circle as long as he could. Michigan, Paris down by two. Just 28 seconds. It's a quick escape. And you're, you're, as you're coaching, you're telling him stay with him. All right, stay. Make him work to get out. Nice front trip right there. Roll through. That's not there. Kirkley gets a little bit of elevation. See how he's got the leg pinched right there? And Mason Paris is trying to turn back into it, really expending a lot of energy. He's got the legs clamped right there. Time ticking away. He's going to go to the to far ankle. Seconds. Look for the, comes to the far ankle. He's going to hang on. Yeah, he's going to come on the near ankle and look for the count. And it's okay to give up that stall warning with a two-point lead. He he's won good. this one on his feet. Wow. Three beautiful takedowns. The ability to get out from underneath. Stay in the top position at the end there. Big upset. It's a big upset. I might slightly disagree. I, I think this guy is is right in this class. He hasn't shown it. He hasn't shown it, but, but he showed it tonight. Yeah. Good work. Penn State, Jim, showing tonight why they are the number one team in the country. What an effort up and down this lineup.